Today we're going to build this honeycomb bookshelf on Spensley Design Co. Before I cut anything, I ensured that my blade was at a perfect 90. Even with a cheap table saw like this, the project will go super smooth as long as the blade is set up correctly. I'll start by ripping down some 9.5 inch wide strips of 3 quarter inch thick Baltic birch plywood. Now this cut is going to define the depth of the bookshelf, or the distance from the wall. And with those 9.5 inch wide strips cut down, I grab my crosscut sled and set up a stop block to bring these shelves down to their final size. Now the reason that we're using a stop block is to ensure that all of these shelves have the exact same size, which is crucial to the design. And just a reminder, as always, I have full step-by-step -step PDF plans as well as the SketchUp file available for you, which I'll link down in the description below. Now this might be the most important part of the build here, and that's getting the angle to blade set correctly. So I use this K-Pro digital bevel gauge to dial in a perfect 30 degree angle. But let's actually pause for a quick second to explain what I'm doing here. So each of these honeycomb segments are made out of six shelves, and a circle is perfect 360 degrees. 360 degrees divided by six shelves is 60 degrees per shelf and 90 minus 60 is 30, which is why I set my blade to 30 degrees. However, nailing an absolutely perfect 30 degree angle is gonna be pretty difficult, especially if you have a really crappy table saw like me. And because of that, you actually wanna angle your blade just slightly past 30 degrees, so that the outsides of the honeycomb meet. That's way more important than the inside parts meeting, but enough math, let's get back to the build. With the blade all set up, I started ripping a bevel on both sides of the shelves. Now, if you haven't caught on yet, this build is pretty much all about repetition and can get super boring. And to fight off that boredom, I recommend picking up a set of Bluetooth hearing protection like this Elgin Ruckus set I have so that you can listen to music, audiobooks, or even podcasts while you're working with really loud tools. I should also mention that I'm building two of these bookshelves, which is why you see 72 pieces right here. Yep, 72 of the exact same piece. I told you this was repetitive. All right, so let's actually pause for a quick second. Now, before I started on this whole bookcase build, I actually whipped up a small sample of a hexagon just to test the strength out. Now, this sample is held together with just glue, but let's actually test how strong this is now. All right, so here we go. Here's the sample. I'm just gonna set it on the ground and stand on it. Well, it survived the drop, so. Yeah, I mean, that's not going anywhere. So I think it's pretty safe to say that you definitely do not need dominoes. I weigh about 200 pounds and jumping on this, it was not going anywhere. Now, with that being said, there are a couple things that dominoes would actually improve in this, and that's why we're gonna use them. So the reason that we actually are gonna use dominoes is because if you look closely, you can see that not all of these pieces are perfectly lined up, but we wanted to show you that you can, in fact, make this bookcase without one. But before we go on with the build, why don't we stop now and see how much force it takes to actually break this thing. So it did end up breaking right along the seam, but I don't think anyone's actually gonna be going and throwing all of their furniture on the ground. So like I said, it should be plenty strong enough for a bookcase. I then cut a total of 288 mortises for some dominoes and glued up the honeycombs. Thank you. 
Now one tip that I have here is to actually use painter's tape as your clamps to hold everything together while the glue dries. And once the glue on the individual hexagons cures, I could then glue all of the hexagons together. Now the glue is plenty strong enough here since there's so much surface area, but you can always use screws or nails or some kind of fasteners if you really want to. After waiting for the glue to dry again, I needed to cut the bottom shelf down to size. Now I'm far from perfect, so I cut this piece down oversize at first and then slowly snuck up to get the perfect fit. The last section of the bookshelves that we need to build is the base. So I cut some strips out of this maple slab that will end up being the sides and front back of the base, and then also cut down some short leg pieces that, well, will become the legs. The legs are gonna have a taper on them. So I marked out where I wanted the taper to stop and to start and aligned it to the edge of this plywood sled. A few scrap pieces would prevent the leg from moving and ensure that every leg is perfectly identical. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, then you've likely seen this method before. So I'll leave a link down in the description to a video that kind of explains this process a little bit more in detail. You basically just make the cut once, rotate it, cut it again, and then you've got perfectly tapered legs. To assemble the base, we're gonna use pocket holes. Masco was nice enough to send us over one of their new M1 pocket hole systems that's solid metal, not plastic parts like a lot of others. I'll start off by using the built-in thickness scale to determine the proper settings and then use the brass thumb screws on the back to lock it into place. Next, I'll twist the soft rubber head of the hold down clamp until it securely holds the piece in place. And to dial in the perfect setting for the drill bit, I inserted this depth turret into the base of the M1 jig and inserted the pocket hole drill bit. After spinning the turret to the correct thickness, I could tighten down the stop collar to lock in the perfect settings. And the best thing about this jig, well at least for me, is that it has built-in dust collection, which not only saves you time on cleanup, but also prolongs the life of your drill bits. And now that all the settings are perfectly dialed in, I'll just lock down my workpiece and drill in the pocket holes. I want the base to be inside about one quarter inch from the legs, so I use a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood to act as a spacer and then use the pocket hole screws to securely fasten the pieces together. I can then set the base on the bottom of the bookshelf and use more pocket hole screws to securely fasten the two components together. Our client requested that we use stain on these two shelves, so Miranda and I started off by applying some of this pre-stain conditioner. This helps the stain go on smoothly and prevents any blotchiness that birch and maple are very prone to showing. We then applied some of this wood stain to give the shelves a darker and more rustic vibe. And while we work on staining the shelves, I want to give a big thanks to our Patreon supporters for helping us move towards making this channel a full-time reality. Right now we work out of an apartment garage and actually lose money by making content, but sharing my work is what makes me feel fulfilled. So if you want to support the channel and pick up some cool perks, consider supporting us on Patreon. But as always, no pressure. And to finish everything off, I used some satin polyurethane that I applied with this Homerite Super Finish Max HVLP sprayer. This dramatically reduced the time it took to finish these bookshelves compared to applying the finish by hand. Each coat took about 3 minutes compared to the probably 20 to 30 minutes that it would have taken by hand. And with the finish applied and dried, these shelves were done. Now this build wasn't necessarily hard, but it definitely tested my patience. There aren't a lot of steps, but every step was repeated a ridiculous number of times. But hey, 
gives you the perfect opportunity to catch up on some of your favorite podcasts, maybe check out the new Taylor Swift album, or maybe just reminisce about your favorite childhood cereal. Who am I kidding? Nobody liked that crap. It was all about Cinnamon Toast Crunch. See you on the next one.